Could there be an ancient intelligence secretly studying our planet? There are many theories surrounding this hypothesis. Ancient objects located in our skies, fixed within a low Earth orbit, quietly monitoring our planet. Known as the Black Knight, this purported Stone Age satellite is located in a near-fixed polar orbit. It has been attempted to be discredited on a number of occasions. With NASA itself dismissing the object as a lost piece of space debris, yet the location of its orbit, its apparent fixed stationary position, and indeed its murky backstory, dating back as far as 1899, would disagree. The first popular mention of the satellite's existence dating back to the exploration of natural extraterrestrial repeating sources, heard by Nikola Tesla during his 1899 radio experiments. Although its mysterious emissions were also reportedly heard during the observation of long-delayed echoes by amateur radio operator Jürgen Halls in Oslo in 1928, all later dismissed as pulsars. Yet in 1954, researcher Donald Kehoe told newspapers that the United States Air Force had reportedly located it along with another satellite orbiting the moon. However, at that time, no country had the technology to launch such a satellite. In 1973, Scottish author Duncan Lunan analyzed the long-delayed radio echoes received by Halls and others and concluded that they originated from a 13,000-year-old alien probe located in an orbit around the Earth's moon. He suggested that the probe may have originated from a planet located in the solar system of the star Epsilon Botus. Lunin would predictably later retract his publicly made conclusions, saying that he had made outright errors and that his methods had been, quote, unscientific. And in 1998, during the STS-88 mission, we would finally catch a glimpse of this elusive object, one reported as existing for over a century, yet continually denied. Now that its existence was backed up by photographic evidence, the storyline as to its origins changed. These original aforementioned reports are now discredited as never existing. And in its place, the photographs are of a thermal blanket. This explanation now allowing for the object to be classified as man-made and indeed of human origins. The chronology of this storyline shows a mysterious unknown object one emitting radio bursts subsequently dated as many thousands of years old. Turning to actual reports of its existence and location being made via radar and other detective practices. To it, thusly being photographed. Ultimately, these original reports disbanded in favor of it being a space blanket, one lost during a manned space mission. This story shares all the hallmarks of a cover-up, a blanket which somehow found its way into a fixed near-polar orbit, something which we still find difficult to achieve using rockets. Why would there be reports of ancient signals coming from this object? Why would they be dated to over 13,000 years old? Why are there initial reports of two satellites? Could the second be the Crystal Castle previously covered? Did this craft communicate an ancient star map, maybe a celestial procession, allowing accurate dating of the messages? Eventually, NASA would make the page which hosted the pictures inoperable, further stoking the flames of a conspiracy. Perhaps they realized they couldn't discredit the object's existence any longer. What is the Black Knight? Is it really a piece of space debris? Or perhaps something far more profound? We find its existence highly compelling. We don't usually cover the regular, unusual anomalies found by the countless amateur UFO investigators out there who are tirelessly combing the terrain in and around our neighboring planets, moons and asteroids in a search for possible alien craft, artificial structures or even ancient ruins. Although some of these formations can indeed be intriguing, they're often easily disregarded as mere natural formations. However, our next anomaly, we believe, could be seen as a considerable mystery. Since its launch on the 9th of March 2003, the probe explorer Hayabusa 
has completed several interplanetary flybys, traveling a total of 2 billion kilometers to arrive at an asteroid known as Itakawa, or more precisely, 25143 Itakawa, on September 12, 2005, successfully carrying out numerous scientific observations of the asteroid since then. However, what is astonishing regarding this new research is what has been found within these new images taken of our space-traveling neighbor. It seems, during its enormous orbital journey around the cosmos, it's picked up an unusual passenger. Clearly no normal space debris, this mysterious object, now perched or possibly impaled upon the front of the asteroid, looks for all the world like an artificial satellite. A huge, perfectly spherical object, with three clearly distinct yet not too damaged legs or more likely receiver antenna protruding from the area which impacted the asteroid. It's resting upon the so-called Woomera Desert District of the Space Rock and was clearly not there the last time it was photographed. Could this object possibly be a satellite from an alien planet? Maybe still active? Did the asteroid have an extremely close call with a possible alien neighbor? avoiding an impact we would have never learnt of. Itakawa is a Mars-crosser asteroid, and interestingly, it was the first asteroid to be the target of a sample return mission by a space-going nation, and is still the smallest asteroid ever photographed. It was discovered in 1998 by the Linear Project, and was given the provisional designation 1998 SF-36. However, in August 2003, it was officially named after Hideo Itakawa, a Japanese rocket scientist. Maybe Hideo spotted something. The object it now carries is clearly not of normal formation. Not only does it not look natural, but displays a symmetrical design similar to those found within our own artificial objects, such as satellites. And due to this object being caught floating through space, just like our own satellites do, it's undoubtedly a very compelling anomalous object. Was this small asteroid chosen for the first major exploratory program above all other asteroids because the Japanese knew something we didn't? Just what could this object be? We just hope they explore it further, and whatever they discover, they share it with the world. When they land and the hatch opens, Perhaps we will be looking at ourselves in the mirror. Many of you will be aware of the interstellar traveler, which visited our solar system from a galaxy far, far away a few years ago. Named Oumuamua, it is now recognized as the first known interstellar object ever successfully detected as it passed through our solar system. Formally designated 1-2017-U1, it was discovered on the 19th of October 2017 by Robert Work while using the Pan-STARRS telescope at the Haleakala Observatory within Hawaii. He spotted the mysterious object 40 days post-solar transit on the 9th of September that year. Many people have wondered about the true origins and indeed true identity of the object, yet few have received the backlash which Avi Loeb experienced on November of 2018 when he published a new research paper in an astrophysics journal. Scientists publish thousands of research papers every year. These papers will often attract little public attention. However, Loeb's latest work gained a suspiciously high level of controversy and rejection when he dared to cover the rather taboo subject within this so-called official field, aliens. The subject of the paper was the mysterious supposed space rock. He posits that it likely traveled for billions of years, past countless other stars, before reaching our own. Eventually, it will cross the edge of our solar system and into interstellar space again. The leading hypothesis among astronomers is that Oumuamua is an odd-looking comet, a remnant of another solar system kicked out by natural forces and sent barreling through the cosmos. Loeb, however, offered a rather different explanation. Quote, Oumuamua could be a probe one deliberately sent to our solar system by an alien civilization. The detection of extraterrestrial beings, the most significant scientific discovery in human history, if we were ever told about such discoveries, of course, one must remember that as a civilization, many believe systems openly objective to the possibility of alien life 
many of which are over a millennial old, the thought of finding sapient life beyond Earth, of learning that we are not alone, however, is the pursuit of countless individuals within the modern world, so it is no surprise that his opinions have been so widely debated. But additionally, there is seemingly another possible reason for why the paper was so widely reported on. This being the fact that Loeb is, in fact, a tenured Harvard professor within the astronomical department. Quote, if this was some random astronomer that you had never heard of from, say, Equatorial Guinea, you probably wouldn't write a story on it, says Brian Gensler, the director of the University of Toronto's Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics, and a former colleague of Loeb's at Harvard. He continued, There's a lot of astronomers that have outlandish ideas, and most of them aren't taken seriously by the community, and most of the time the media don't really give attention to them." End quote. Loeb has two decades worth of experience and is well regarded in the field. So, regardless of what others would like him to believe, his opinions matter. Was Oumuamua really an ancient alien's exploratory craft, one spying on ours and many other solar systems? If it is, it means we are indeed not alone. What's more, it means we have undoubtedly been found. So the professor's opinions, no matter how controversial, we find highly compelling. There are many theories which orbit the Apollo space missions. However, Apart from the obvious moon hoax claims, there are many other baffling tales surrounding these missions. Surrounding not only a proof to the validity of the programs, but also a seemingly transparent approach to presumably many, although we would never believe all, of the anomalies that the American Space Agency encountered during those incredibly expensive yet highly successful missions. Watched by nearly everyone spinning around on our small globe. One, very few lucky enough to travel away from like to call the blue marble. There are many unexplained images that have been snapped of the moon by NASA. Some claimed as showing nothing like that of the famous pyramid we have covered in the past, seemingly rediscovered on an image once claimed by NASA as an overexposed image. Yet there are many other anomalies and objects NASA neither confirm nor deny the existence of yet still release said images to the world. They do not deny and equally accept that many they cannot explain. The Shard This image is a 44-time enlargement of a lunar orbiter frame coded LO384M, taken with a medium-resolution camera at a distance of at least 250 miles. It shows an object dubbed by Richard Hoagland as the Shard. Interestingly, Although some have dismissed the object as a simple camera malfunction, the shard also possesses a shadow correctly aligned with the position of Saul at that time. According to Hoagland, quote, Poor resolution images, like this one of the shard, have led some to conclude it is an ephemeral outgassing event. However, the Enterprise mission enhancements reveal no spray or splatter, which would be consistent with such a conclusion. He goes on to state, the object appears to be solid, though badly battered by meteors." End quote. Above and behind the shard is the tower, another among this collection of mystifying images of apparent lunar objects. The tower has been researched and studied by many people since its discovery among NASA's images. A massive structure, calculated as being an incredible 7 miles high, this estimation clearly makes any consideration that the tower is indeed a real structural anomaly, soaring from the lunar surface a tough pill to swallow. Yet the images remain an incredibly difficult thing to explain, and the tower's cuboid feature atop just adds to this ongoing mystery, yet one of deep intrigue, is the mystery of Castle. The name given to an object captured by the Apollo 10 astronauts during the Moon Orbit mission codenamed AS-10-32-4822. It is of a one-mile-long object floating miles above the lunar surface, like a satellite to our satellite, that, even more amazingly, is possibly like that of what makes Saturn's rings, that being ice crystals of pure water, is apparently, according to future enhanced image study, 
also made from a material alike glittering glass. Apart from the reports of strange music being heard on the far side of the moon, a claim few will ever be able to confirm the truth of, this extraordinary object is something very few know of, and even less have studied. Unless more attention is given to such incredible anomalies, ones witnessed by us already, and so relatively close to our little home, we may never know what they are. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Antarctica, one of the world's most mysterious continents, home to one of the largest and driest deserts on the planet, covering an area of around 5.5 million square miles. If there was anywhere on Earth where crashed, preserved, ancient alien technologies could still be found, it would be here. An untouched landscape, which may in all possibility be the final resting place as of yet unretrieved relics, which may have been stranded there to this day. The deep sea which surrounds Antarctica, for example, are some of the most difficult and inhospitable environments to explore anywhere. Far away from the modern world, deep within the frigid, pitch-black waters of this massive chunk of ice, where our next discovery was miraculously made. An out-of-place artifact which is still resting at the bottom of this sea. Known as the Eltanen Antenna, if it wasn't for the brute strength of the nearly 2,000-ton ice-breaking vessel known as the Eltanen, we may never have found it. Initially a U.S. Navy cargo-carrying icebreaker, in 1962, she was reclassified as an oceanographic research ship and became the world's first dedicated Antarctic research vessel. On the 29th of August 1964, while collecting sample cores and photographing the seabed west of Cape Horn, the Altanen took the first known photograph of the antenna at a depth of nearly 4,000 meters. The first public mention of the unusual object would not surface for several months. A news item which appeared in the New Zealand Herald on 5 December 1964, under the heading Puzzle Picture from the Seabed, would briefly disclose the discovery, yet any further exploratory missions, if indeed there has been any, have been operating in secret. Similar to the Baltic Sea anomaly, yet positioned at a far deeper depth, in an extremely remote, cold, and lonely part of our world, it too shows all the hallmarks of an artificially created object. The question is, what could it be? And more importantly, what was or is its function? In 1968, author Brad Steiger wrote an article for Saga magazine in which he claimed that the Altanen had in fact photographed, quote, an astonishing piece of machinery very much like the cross between a TV antenna and a telemetry antenna." End quote. It is interesting to note that the Black Knight satellite, an anomalous object which is in a polar orbit, has been declared by numerous investigators throughout history as an artificial alien satellite, and with what appears to be an enormous alien antenna resting on the Antarctic seafloor. Is it possible that the two are connected? Or possibly, in communication with each other. In 2003, Tom DeMary, a researcher in underwater acoustics, contacted oceanographer A.F. Amos, a member of the Altanen's crew in the 1960s, in an effort to debunk any theory involving artificial design. In turn, Amos referred DeMary to the 1971 book The Face of the Deep by Bruce C. Heason and Charles D. Hollister. It seems Hollister had already attempted to identify the mysterious object as a carnivorous sea sponge. However, these attempts to discredit any unusual hypothesis was solely based on the same photographs we are privileged to. Further photographic exploration of the object, if undertaken, has been done in complete isolation from the public. What is the Altanen antenna? A mere sea sponge? An actual alien antenna? Whatever it is, it seems certain fields of study would like you to believe it's natural. Regardless of whether confirmation of such claims was made, we always find this highly compelling.